oh, it's, just, it's nice to pull out of the store and yes. uh, and just be like sober. Oh my god, my favorite thing was like coming down uh, Laurel and I'd be listening to like some fucking jam and Rage Against the Machine headed to the store. Wang Chung oh, dance hall. Oh, it's Wang Chung. It's Wang Chung. I'm, I'm, oh. didn't have my glasses on. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> a white Darryl. guy. I said it's a Daryl Hall. <laughs> same guy. <laughs> so it looks about the same. Yeah. Good mullet. That's a great song too, though. Driving but, to the store is a bad. It's fun. On yeah. Laurel, yeah. Laurel, you go fast. That's a fun yeah. drive. Yeah. Oh, it's just. It's also like you're on your way to the fucking promised land. Like for us as comics, the comedy store was mecca. Like, I remember being an open micer. Literally, that's what, yeah. An open micer. Oh, and I always knew that I had to get to the comedy store. I'm like, if I'm going to be a comic, I have to get to the comedy store. Like, when Mitzi passed me as a paid regular, it was one of the best days of my life. Like, I remember that day, like, I'm a real comic. Yeah. Like, I can't believe I'm passed at the comedy store. Yeah. It was, it was like, that place, it was just not a comedy club, man. You get Did she tell the, you or did they call you the next day? She told me. She told you, yeah. You're really funny. You're a paid regular now. I was like, holy shit. Holy shit. I was on a TV show. I didn't give a fuck about that show. Oh, I was I was 42, had TV shows, successful touring comic. I got passed at the store. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't say a word to anyone. Because I was like, it was a big deal for me. I was really nervous. I got bumped by Louie. I got bumped by Tosh. And I got bumped by Judd Apatow for my, my one paid regular spot. It's now like midnight. And I get off stage, and f I said this last night when I brought him on stage. Tony Hinchcliffe pulls me aside, and he goes, I always have a soft spot in my heart for that guy. He goes, hey, congratulations. I said, what? And he goes, first paid regular spot. He's like, let's go do a shot together. No one knew. Fuck yeah. And I went, we went outside, and he was like, it's a big deal. It it's should a big celebrate fucking it. deal. I did a toast. I did a thing, and I was like, fuck yeah, thank you, Tony. It was, but, and, and, and I had a career. But it meant so much to me. There's yeah, two it's... things that I remember from the store that were like landmark moments. One was becoming a paid regular, and two, Paul Mooney told me I was funny. Wow. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. <sighs> Paul Mooney told you you were funny? Paul Mooney. Paul Mooney <sighs> never said it to anybody. And Paul Mooney did not like me when I first got there. <laughs> I was this cute little fucking oh, dummy. You're funny. I was just saying, you know, I was like, okay. But one night he saw me, it was like 14 people in the crowd. And I went up and I did my act hard. I, I, I did the full thing. And he go, and he was in the back of the room. Ha ha ha! Oh yeah! Ha, ha. Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't remember what bit it was, but uh, I remember he shook my hand. He put his hand on my shoulder. He goes, "You're a funny motherfucker." That's cool. And I was like, whew, whew. I, remember, I had yeah. to leave. I had to like go out in the hallway. I was like, "Whoa!" Try to be cool. <sighs> Try to be like, "Oh, cool, thanks, man." Oh my <laughs> like, god! Oh. I was tingling like all like Paul Mooney. People don't know how goddamn good Paul Mooney was. He had power. Dude. Oh my god! He would write too. When shit would go down, something would happen, and he would have like ten minutes of it that night. Yeah. Like there was the Spirit airline. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't Spirit. It was like one of them budget airlines that crashed in Florida, and he had this old this bit about these poor people clutching onto their purse while alligators were eating them. <laughs> <laughs> It was like the day <laughs> after the crash. And, uh, and and then he was like, that's right, motherfucker. I write. I write. <laughs> Patrice pulled me aside yeah. one night in New York, and uh, we were at Caroline's. We do, did some show, to, so we go to Edinburgh. And everyone starts leaving. And he grabs me and goes, don't leave. I said, why? He goes, Paul Mooney. This is a gift, because I didn't know who Paul Mooney was. Yeah, he right. Paul Mooney's, people didn't know who he was. Paul Mooney's here. And I go, who the fuck's that? And he goes, you're sitting. You're watching him. So I ordered a beer, and I sat down. And I go, I, I was like, I, I, it's getting late, Patrice. And he goes, shut up, motherfucker. Look who's behind you. And I turn around, and it's Eddie Murphy. And he goes, if Eddie Murphy's coming to watch him, we're staying. Yeah. And, and me and Patrice watched Paul Mooney. And Paul Mooney had a bottle of champagne on stage, drank the whole fucking thing. Yeah, those and, little bottles yeah. he would have. He would drink them, and uh, he would make a joke, and then like hold mm -hmm. the bottle up with two fingers. Yeah. And you'd hear Eddie Murphy, ha 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 whatever his laugh is. Yeah. Dude, your and impressions are on point today. Say an ethnicity. Say an ethnicity. I'll bang it out. Do it. Go, go, go. Taiwanese. Hello. <laughs> Nailed. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs>